Dios. Tavares, and uh, I'm from LA, um, born and raised there, and decided to come to Japan to study Japanese. Nanka saisho no mai wa amari tsukawanai kara ha hotondo minna no saisho nanti yu. You probably already heard of Mark Cerny. I became friends with him at Crystal, at Crystal Dynamics, and uh, he speaks fluent Japanese, mm -hmm. and was able to open a lot of doors with that. And uh, I saw his example and decided, hey, if I learn Japanese, you know, maybe I'll get can create some of those opportunities for myself. So uh, this is Seiji Sasaki-san, and he was uh, in charge of the, all the AI, everything the local Rokos do. So this is Hiroya Matsugami, he's the lead programmer. My first game that's commercial is uh, was a centipede conversion for the Commodore 64. Centipede for Commodore yeah, 64. I did it right out of high school. <laughs> wow. Yeah, in 1983. Wow, 1983. That was the first game I got paid for. Uh -huh. I made games as a hobby before that. Right. Nothing that we sold. And Apple games, Commodore games, Atari games, NES games, Game Boy games, uh -huh. SNES games, Genesis games, everything. All the way. All 3DO, you mean? You made gigs on 3DO. Made gigs on 3DO. And I uh, even made an M2 game that never shipped. But wow. Of course, M2 never shipped. Right. I have a lot of foreign friends, non Japanese friends in, in Japanese game companies. Mm -hmm. The majority of them are not in production, they're in like localization. Mm -hmm. And the localization departments are generally a bunch of foreigners, so they all generally speak English plus whatever other language they're translating, plus some Japanese. Right. And the departments pretty much run in English. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, I have a few friends that have actually worked in production. Production is almost always 100% Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, that's been hard for me. Mm -hmm. I'm stereotypical, introverted, geeky programmer, at least in the past. I'm not as introverted now, especially in English, but in Japanese, I'm not 100% fluent, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's really a big, I don't know what to call it, it really puts me in back in my introverted mode. Uh -huh. Japanese workers are more, they'll do what they're asked without complaint compared to an Ameri American staff, mm -hmm. much more. Mm -hmm. um, but they still, I mean, at least in our team, you know, people still give their input. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the American teams are much more, American people in particular, and probably European as well, are much more, I don't know the word is, you know, feel free to just insert themselves, assert themselves mm -hmm. wherever they want. And the Japanese developers will, are more... A little more restrained. Restra I don't know if restrained is the right word. I think it's just a different attitude about what it means to have a job. Right. Um, yeah, well, yeah, it's just a cultural difference, I mean, yeah. in general. I mean, it's, it's, pro it's not exclusive to the game industry or anything, I'm sure. But Otherwise, but they're, they have an attention to detail that a Western group doesn't have, mm -hmm. from my experience. Um, not that they're, they're aw there's awesome Western games, but a lot of them have rough edges, mm -hmm. more than I think Japanese games have rough edges. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I'm talking about little things like, like just how the screens come in or little parts of the art or, you know, um, when you eat something where the particles fly out or when you collect right. something, all those little tiny, little, tiny, details. Little, tiny little details, they might spend, you know, three or four iterations on something, whereas an American group might even notice that there should be something there. Right. Um, and otherwise... And do you think that's a good thing? Art. I mean, you think it's good to have well, that kind of detail? It depends. I think sometimes my American side comes out, it's like nobody's ever going to notice that detail. Right, right. You know? Um, and there's some other bigger part of the game that I'm like, well, you know, quit wasting time on, this, on these little tiny details and fix this big glaring sure, sure, problem sure. over here. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think overall it, it gives them a more polished feel. I think that's one thing that distinguishes Japanese games from Western games in some areas. Not, not, there's obviously exceptions on both sides, sure. but uh, in general. They're also very picky about the art. They definitely have a different style. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's very weird. I mean, um, actually, Naughty Dog was over recently asking mm -hmm. for input about the game they're making next. Mm -hmm. And um, I brought him in to meet my team, and they asked some of the people, you know, what our team thought of the art for Naughty Dog's next game. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. it's been interesting just to watch their in their comments on American or Western games. Mm -hmm. Like when Konosan first saw World of Warcraft, I saw the review on some site, and the the reviewer was like just crazy for the game. Mm. So I showed it the review to him and he was just not into the art at all. He'd probably play the game and enjoy it. Right. But uh, 
I think the problem is is that the American style or the Western style of exaggerating a character mm -hmm. just is not appealing to Japanese sensibilities. You know, if you're going to do something that's completely real, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure Gears of War is not going to necessarily be a problem because they look fairly real. Mm -hmm. um, although that kind of game doesn't appeal to the Japanese audience right, in general. Right. But uh, something like... I remember Cliffy B saying, I think it was on one of the forums, that um, he had heard from Famitsu's reviewers that they were really looking forward to Gears of War in Japan. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, like those kind of games, even the very best of the best, don't seem to make an impact here at all. Like, True, but just an art style in, in particular, like something like The Sims art style, which is kind of a caric caricatured um, characters and uh, a... Uh, Guitar heroes, characters. I mean, it's not really about characters. They are in there. That style just does not appeal to the Japanese at all. I'm not even sure it appeals to Americans, to be honest. But uh, those games sold just fine. So right, right. you know, they might have sold even better if they they hired some Japanese artists to sure. art direct. I'm not sure, but sure. Uh, yeah, that that style just doesn't appeal. So as far as uh, you know, when when a Western company wants to bring their game to Japan, like I remember back in the day, like when Crash came to Japan, right. and uh, Crash, what was it, Jack and Daxter or Ratchet and Clank, one of those games, uh, maybe all of those games, there was a lot of um, work put into changing the design for Japan. Like I think, uh, uh, who was the one who got his goatee removed or, or something? Was it the character? Jack. Lead? Yeah, Jack. Got his goatee removed. Yeah, and somebody, oh, the, uh, Ratchet got bigger eyebrows, I think, right. or, uh, and that was all, you know, to kind of make the character seem more Japanese. Um, do, you, do you think that's a, you know, a good approach to trying to make Western games more appealing in Japan? I think if, if you're making a character, like, you know, like Ratchet and Clank or Jack or Crash, then um, if you can design it that way and you have the resources and you, re and you actually want to make a hit in Japan, then involving the Japanese side to get their input on what appeals to Japanese artists. Even me, you can even have them remake the character if you're, mm -hmm. if you set up your environment well. Mm -hmm. um, in like in Crash in particular, since I worked on that, you know, they actually the the title screen is completely different. The the character is cuter. They changed all the icons. Mm -hmm. The main character in the game is so small and so low res on a PS1 that they didn't have to change them. You could just basically say. Here's a picture, a detailed picture of the character, and then right. you would, your imagination would project that onto the one right. in the game. Now that we're getting into the PS3 era, then you know, you probably actually have to do a little more than that since you can actually see the real character in the game. Right. But uh, I think it's definitely something people should look into. People in the West, Western developers like kind of lament that they can't get into the Japanese market. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's because the game's not appealing like right. to them, like first-person shooters. But I think the characters as well, if, they, if they're serious, they want the market, they have to invest that time. It's kind of a broad question, but just tell us, you know, what is Loco Roco? What is Loco Roco? Well, lo Loco Roco are um, little creatures that live on a planet, and they're pretty happy-go-lucky, and they love singing. And uh, the game is about one day these uh, evil moja come from outer space and start eating the local roco. Moja is just the name of the bad guys. Yeah, the name of the bad guys. Um, there's actually there's actually Koja, Moja, and Oja. Okay. And uh, those probably won't make sense in in, in English, but uh, Ko is like a prefix for small or suffix actually. Uh -huh. and o is also is a prefix for big. Uh -huh. So the main name is Moja, and then like you know his nicknames, the small ones are called Koja. Ah. Uh, Gotcha. Yeah. So like little mojas, big mojas, right. basically. And uh, you, as the planet, are trying to help the local Roku survive and and get to a safe spot and kill the uh, um, mojas by rocking and rolling and shaking. And as you do that, you can help them get along. But they actually have their own AI and they move on their own. So sometimes they can do something really stupid that you didn't want them to do. Um, I guess that's actually sometimes hard for people to get that you don't actually control the characters. Like when like some people will think like when you make. Uh, when you press both buttons to make them jump, you're not actually making them jump, you're shaking the earth and bouncing right. them into the air. So basically you're controlling the planet yeah. and then they're, they're just going, kind of going with it the right. way you tilt things. The local Roku have a lot of personality. They, they have, I don't know how many things they can do, but it's quite a few things. If you let them sit there, you won't see this that often. You might see it on the title or you might see it in the local house. 
But uh, if you just stop playing yeah. and break them apart and let them sit there, they do all kinds of stuff. They'll yeah. sound off one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> and they'll jump on top of each other yeah. and they'll stack up. If you can, they'll, they'll stack up to five high. If you can, if you can get them to do that, that's pretty amazing because because they're actually using. It's not something that's canned. Mm -hmm. They're using their physics and guessing how high they have to jump and where they have to jump, and and it's an imprecise thing, so they can't do it very often. Mm -hmm. They'll fall over and break each other apart and things like that. But it's pretty cool. Konosan really had those from the very beginning. Like as soon as he had the idea, he's very um, prolific in game design. He writes all kinds of game designs for himself all the time. And uh, when he first started to have the idea, he carries a PDA with him all the time. Sometimes he even carries a tablet PC. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was scribbling down notes. And you can check his old notes that he probably made within the first two weeks of the idea. And pretty much everything that's in the game is in those notes. Really, I was really surprised myself because I saw saw the notes, but I didn't really pay attention way back when he first did it in sure. detail but just recently I'm trying to see if I can get Sony to put out a book about the making of Loco Roco mm -hmm. and it has all those things in there and I was collecting them all and I'm looking at them wow everything's in there Chupa's in there the, the guys that come up and, and lift you are in there the you know Moja's in there they're all in there and uh, I was really surprised that right from the very beginning right. there weren't things that came up later I mean they refined them later and there were other ideas added later but, sure, but sure. all the basic ideas were in the initial thoughts. Right, that's pretty cool. Do you know where what the original inspiration was for this? Like, you know, did it come through a dream or you something? You know, I'm not 100% sure. He talked about in his last interview that uh, he had a lot of um, AI experience from college. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and clearly, looking at his other designs as well, he's very much into characters that do their own thing that mm -hmm. you then interact with but um he my experience or my impression from working with him because i used to actually be on a different team and he came by my desk one day and and i was showing him things on the web and i showed him one of those spring mass simulators they're all over the what place what it's called a spring mass simulator okay and you can basically put down a bunch of points and you connect them with springs and then you can see how they react uh, and if you search for spring mass mm -hmm. you probably find 20 or 30 like ones written in java or something okay. on the net for free mm -hmm. and he saw one and, he, and if you make a circle and connect all this, the points with the springs you'll see basically that kind of spongy Character that you see that the local rocos are made out of, and and uh, he saw that and just was like immediately inspired, and pretty much within like days, mm -hmm. he had the he had um, the basic ideas for the whole game. And, wow. Yeah, cool. and it's pretty funny because those have been around for seems like ten years or so. I would say I really didn't have that much creative input. I mean, I certainly could talk to them and give them ideas, but um, there's a core group of people mm -hmm. that seemed to sit in the design meetings. Mm -hmm. Then they made all the decisions, and then they made they put all the ideas, and then uh, Konosan would, you know, decide which ones they were going to use and and then spec it out. They did have a lot of input in how we built the game. Mm -hmm. um, From so, a technical standpoint, yeah. There's there was only at the beginning there was only three programmers. Mm -hmm. um, and then we added one about halfway through, maybe a little less than halfway through, to do uh, the enemies. Mm -hmm. And then there's a few more that, that were that participated later in small parts, like the sound programmer was on for a couple months, and uh, the guy who did the part that exchanges levels. Oh, right. Um, but uh, but Beeson is such a small team, we all had very large responsibilities. So mine was all the level editing and the whole the whole environment for building the game. and. Uh, You'd have to ask the rest of the team whether they enjoyed it, but my impression was that um, that they felt it was good and it allowed them to do it, to be as creative as they've been, and that made me pretty happy. That I thought that based on what they had done previously, they wouldn't have made nearly as a creative game without the without the freedom that I helped create. I guess. Right. Yeah.
It's actually really fun too. We've been playing it, um, you know, over the past week or two, and um, it's really cool how like, some of the voices actually sound. You can kind of make up your own words to them. Like some of them sound right. like they're saying, some of them sound like they're saying some stuff that I'm not even gonna repeat on camera. But it's kind of fun. It's kind of There's fun a to few. play along and listen to what it sounds like they're saying, but. Obviously, that wasn't intentional, but it's still pretty cool. It wasn't intentional, mostly. I think there's a few that are clearly Japanese-influenced. Oh, really? Like, when they see the spikes, you can kind of hear them say, toge, toge, oh, which right. toge is, you know, spike, spike in Japanese. Right. So, um, there was, like, actually the same thing I noticed in, in Eco. You uh -huh. know, if you play, um, and uh, um, Yoda. Yoda falls down, he runs up, and he, and he says, daijoubu. Uh, you know, uh, even, yeah, though it's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. even though it's not supposed to be the same language, that's you true, know? That's right. Yeah, it's totally clear that that's what he's yeah. saying. Um, <clears throat> that means, uh, you know, are you okay? Yeah. So there's a few words like that, but yeah, I'd really like to see like almost a forum where people put in what they think the words are. I'm really curious yeah. to find out because I have my own interpretation for some of them. Right. And uh, really? yeah, I'd really like to know what everybody thinks they are. Why is the game coming out first in Europe? Well, I think Europe, Europe generally gets feels like you know they're treated like second class. Everything mm -hmm. comes out there last, and so um, they were releasing the white PSP in Europe, and they just really, really asked, "Can we please have this first? You mm -hmm. know, let us have something first for once." Right. I think, and and we're really happy because they're definitely really pushing it and and uh, right. giving it the support we're hoping it gets, which is not true in every territory. You know, some people think it's not going to sell. I can. I can see how that, that might, you know, without the right push, but I think if people give it a try, they'll really find that it's one of the funner games out there. There's a level editor in the game. You can build your own levels, and you can trade those levels with people. And I'm really, curious to see what people make because you know we don't have every idea in the world and even just getting levels from the play testers when they found a bug they would send us a you know hit run this level that they made uh -huh. and there was some pretty amazing stuff they made so really? I'm really excited to see how people use the stuff in that to make things and so people uh, can trade those levels people can trade those levels wirelessly or you can they get saved in the memory card sticks so uh -huh. you can copy them up on the net if you wanted to so a game like um, Mega Man for the PSP also has level editing right but there are old school tile based game and so it's very easy for them to make it restricted because you only put one thing in a spot. Uh, right, right, but our right. game is that whole springs and, and a lot of physics mm -hmm. calculations going on. So it can get it can get uh, and you can get twenty of those local rocos on. That was probably the hardest actually that was the hardest part, keeping the frame rate up with twenty local rocos on uh -huh. the screen. There's no multiplayer element to the game, right? Besides like I guess trading levels and stuff. No. There's no like, I think I, that was probably one thing that got cut early on. Really? Um, there was some work in doing some multiplayer stuff. It was mostly kind of outside the main game though, mm -hmm. so it kind of seemed like tacked on. And I think in the end, instead of spending time on that, we decided just to get what we had, that we knew we could do well, do that first, and then maybe, you know, sometime in the future, if we're lucky, right. we'll uh, uh, try to figure out a way to make something multiplayer, maybe. <laughs> What's your favorite part of the game? What's my favorite part? That's really hard, because there isn't really a part that sticks out for me. But uh, I'd say overall, my favorite part is that I've enjoyed the game the whole time that we've been making it. I mean, most of the time, on your average game, you get, you get pretty bored of it pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I was really lucky. I worked in Crash Team Racing. And I think that, because it's a four-player game, um, we had fun challenging each other all the way through, even until after it shipped. Mm -hmm. And this game, it's not a multiplayer game, but uh, it was still fun to play all the way through. You'd add something new and you'd just want to play with it because mm -hmm. it was so spongy. And of course, being lucky, you know, I had um, a copy of Maya, and uh, which is what we used to build our levels, and mm -hmm. I could make whatever I wanted. So most of the time I had to make levels for testing things, just really simple. But there's some fun things where I thought, hey, what if I build this and try it out? Mm -hmm. um, 
and uh, yeah, it's just that it kept fresh, or I don't know, fresh is the right word, but I kept enjoying it all the way through. It's probably my favorite. Thing. Okay, okay. 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 Fast fun for